I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. guys. And you'll notice from the toques and the date, we're getting ready for winter. And winter in Canada, at least, means taking great pictures in the snow. I think as Canadians, we're particularly, we love getting out there. The snow doesn't scare us. We do some of the most fun things in the winter. And yet, a lot of people uh, don't take their camera. And if they do, they take some bad pictures because it's a kind of a tricky thing taking pictures in the snow. So in this short video, we're going to go through some of the equipment you need and some of the tips that you can use to get much better pictures when you're shooting the snow. So Billy, first of all, talk about equipment. Like, you know, when it's snowing, it's cold. Sometimes it's actually snowing. Your equipment can get wet. What are some tips on the equipment you can use? Well, normally, you know, before the days of waterproof cameras mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, freeze-proof cameras, um, we just normally take out our digital cameras and would cover it up, whether we had it on a plastic bag to keep the water away from it. So okay. that's some of the tips that you can use for taking pictures uh, in, in, you know, wet and snow conditions. Um, of course, we have a waterproof camera right here that actually not just waterproof, but also is snowproof and mudproof and sandproof. Okay. Basically, it's completely sealed. So, you know, the best type of situation I have in, in terms of equipment would be, you know, a waterproof camera to take pictures in the snow. That way you're not worrying. If you're snowboarding or if you're on the snowmobile or if you're playing ball hockey, whatever you're doing out there and enjoying the outdoors where there's snow, um, having a waterproof camera is still maybe your best bet then is what you're saying? Absolutely. I agree. Okay, so let's go on. Now that we know that probably, you know, we either take very good care with our non-waterproof camera or we, we just take a waterproof camera if we're one of those outdoor fun-loving people that's always out there getting wet and snowy. So we've got that camera. Now what's different about shooting in the snow and what do we need to do to fix the camera or to make, fix the uh, camera settings to make sure we get the best pictures? Well, one of the things you notice when taking pictures in the snow, again, similar to taking pictures in the water, is that uh, with the reflection of the light on, on, in the snow, that your pictures come up very cool. And I just don't mean cold cool, but yeah. very bluish in tone. And so uh, in, in, in most digital cameras nowadays, they do have a scene position mode that you can set up to specifically shoot in the snow. And it really adjusts the white balance and the color uh, on that image so that you get more of a warmer picture, yeah. more natural picture than you would a, a, a very cool and bluish image. So there's this thing of white balance basically being thrown off by the, you know, the sheer amount of white there. The other thing that the, the sheer amount of white in a scene can throw off is the exposure. Mm -hmm. Because when a camera has an automatic exposure system, of course, it's really just doing what it thinks when it comes to reading all the light. And when it sees a whole bunch of snow, it sees a lot of bright scene. And therefore, it tends to underexpose the picture because it thinks it's so bright out there. But in fact, if it was your subject, let's say your small child was in the middle of the snow, they're not bright and white like that snow, so they'll actually end up being underexposed. So there's a couple of things specifically when you're taking pictures of people outside um, that you want to adjust your exposure for. Uh, Billy, why don't you tell us some of the best advice you can give there? Okay, great. Um, I mean, first off, you know, setting it to the scene position mode where it's about snow would do most a, a very good job. Um, of course, the white balance will adjust, you know, you can manually set the white balance to, on a cloudy cloudy day or sunny day to adjust the proper lighting as mm -hmm. well in terms of getting the proper white balance on that. But when it comes to exposure, as, and as Greg said, shooting in the snow, um, with, this, with the snow being very bright and a lot of times it's a sunny day, it reflects back, the camera underexposed the subject, what you can do is do, if your camera has the option, is to change either uh, maybe the metering system. Mm -hmm. So most cameras are, are set normally to the to the to the uh, multi metering system where it looks at several points in the image. It determines that it's dark and it's bright. It's dark. It's bright, and it and it looks at all that and, and it determines this is how the exposure should be in these areas, and it shoots that picture. There's also um, what you want to do though is if you're taking a picture of a subject that's that's what you want as a proper exposure, yeah. some cameras have the option to set it to the spot metering spot feature. Metering, yeah. And by doing spot metering, what it does is that in the center of the image, wherever you aim it, the camera is only going to meter that subject in that right. area. So it's not going to be affected by all that bright That's snow, right. only your subject's reading. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to say on this one is that if you're, if you're close enough to your subject, 
using a fill-in flash outdoors on a snowy very day simple to do. is very good, um, especially a sunny, uh, snowy day because that's when some of the harshest shadows are created, the greatest amounts of contrast, and if you get close enough to your subject and use a fill-in flash, you can get some of the most beautiful winter scene type photographies with your favorite subjects, your friends, your family and them. It's actually a great tip because most people think, oh well it's a bright sunny day, I don't need the flash. Yeah. But sometimes you do need to have the flash yeah. even, even Of course more. it will only be effective if you're fairly close to your subject, otherwise it, it, right. you know, the flash is not big enough to light up uh, the Other, whole mountain at Whistler or something. Another trick you can use, Greg, too, is, is playing with the exposure compensation that's found on some cameras. Yes. And by overcompensating and telling the camera, no, 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 I don't want it this, I don't want the picture to be this bright, I want it to be brighter, yeah. you can overcompensate and therefore your subject can also be much brighter in that yeah, shot as well. Classic setting for overexposing. So I guess there's just a couple of other uh, words of caution. Uh, when, uh, when it's snowing out there, it's also cold. Okay? And there's a couple of other considerations for your digital camera when you're shooting in very cold weather. And uh, a couple of them, uh, first thing has got to do with your batteries. Depending on the type of battery and the type of camera, your batteries may, may, not, may or may not perform to their optimum level once the temperature dips to a certain level. So you can check your owner's manual and it'll give you recommendations on, on where those operations are. So with that said, if you're outside for a long time, keeping your camera in a pocket that's near a warm part of your body, like a lot of ski jackets have pockets right near where your arms and your armpits are, is probably some of the best advice you'd have. That way you can stay out and enjoy the whole day skiing and never worry that your camera is going to fail you when you go out to take that perfect picture. Uh, the other thing is kind of the opposite. When you're out on a very, very cold day for a long time and then you, let's say, you do go into the ski lodge and it's nice and warm there, toasty, but when you pull that camera out, it's very likely that a whole bunch of condensation is going to gather on the uh, camera, the camera lens, based on its you know, rapid change in temperature. And if that's the case, really the best thing to do is just to let the camera sit somewhere and climatize to that room. A lot of people start wiping things off and I see them getting the camera lens dirtier than mm -hmm. it was to begin with. Uh, if you don't have the patience to let it thaw out, if you will, uh, or for that condensation to disappear, then simply uh, make sure you use a proper lens cleaning cloth when uh, cleaning, in particular the lens, and a very soft type cloth when you're cleaning off or wiping down the rest of the camera body. So, you know, we're going to show you a couple great pictures taking out uh, outdoors, and I think when you see these pictures you're going to realize how much fun it is uh, to take pictures and you're going to want to get right out there and taking pictures in the snow yourself. So let's have a look at those shots, Billy. Let's do that. Sometimes when you take pictures in the snow, what you'll find is the auto white balance may not be as accurate as, as it can be. Uh, if we take a look at an example up here, you can see the image is, sort of has a, a blue color cast to it. And really to correct this, you would have to either change the white balance setting and if your camera does have a snow shooting mode, uh, it will help and, and correcting that again, we can take a look at this shot, same shot that was done, but switch to the uh, snow mode. Uh, on this shot here, you can see that the image is sort of underexposed because, again, shooting against snow, uh, the background can be very bright, and the camera gets fooled and, and doesn't want to wash out the snow, so your subject sort of gets underexposed. And one way to correct that is, if we take a look at the second example, is just switching the metering, maybe to the spot metering, and if we aim it towards the face, you'll find that uh, the subject now gets properly exposed, although the background might be slightly overexposed as well, but, but that doesn't matter because what's most important here is the subject. Now, another technique you can do, and it's probably the easiest one, is just to use the flash and to force the flash. And what you notice is, is the flash will actually fill in the shadows in the image while still re maintaining the snow, the background to be uh, not as not as uh, bright. So these are great uh, examples of how to uh, to shoot in the snow. All right, those are great pictures, and you know what? I want to get out in the snow there and take some pictures myself. So uh, let's get going, Billy. Until the next video, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. Fuji guys.